Welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. In this podcast, we discuss mystical works of literature and how they relate to recovery. We hope you enjoy today's podcast episode. Hey guys, buddy C, welcome to the Tao of Understanding Recovery Podcast. My best radio voice. Today we've got Marla and Craig so far. What was, um, Marla, y'all are still doing the 1 p.m. Eastern meeting. It's a it's an all-recovery meeting, correct? Just for any kind of... Yeah, and I believe it's www.dailyrecoverymeeting.com. Yeah, I've got it. I'll have the URL in the notes. And then also we do a 9 p.m. Eastern AA meeting, open AA meeting. That's every night with a speaker every Saturday. We're running anywhere from 60 to 100 people at that meeting. So it's really strong. But uh, if you need a meeting, I know a lot of Zoom meetings are shutting down, but yet a lot of people aren't, you know, fully going back to local meetings. So there's this gap between. Yeah. Make sure and take advantage of that and don't don't isolate. Isolation is not my friend. We just started up our own, but we just, we just reopened our home group about three weeks ago. And now we've had to close it again. There's an R rate of uh, COVID cases coming back in. So the, the Scottish government wants to shut everything down just immediately, just to, so there's the, we, we can't have any more than six members from two households getting together. So we've had to close the meetings back down again for the next uh, next three or four weeks. So Wow. So are, are they going to do Zoom meetings, Craig, or are they just going to stay shut down? Or well, the, the good thing is a lot of people have been talking about keeping the Zoom meetings going because there's a lot of people that can't get to the meetings or there's, still, there's a lot of people that are still shielding and there's a lot of people that are just not comfortable coming into the big crowds now. More particularly the fact when you see everybody sitting with their face masks on, it is kind of intimidating. So I think a lot of the Zoom meetings are going to keep going because it is it's massively convenient for a lot of people. A lot of people really enjoy it now. Yeah, I like the Zoom meetings. I still like my live meetings, so I like going... But yet, I don't like, I still feel isolated when I see people because if I've got a mask on and they've got a mask, I can't see someone smile, you know. I, know I can't see smile. emotions. When this first started, my ladies at the, at the uh, grocery store, I told them, I'm smiling. You just can't <laughs> see it, but I'm smiling. And they were all, you know, doing their thing. So it's nice. But they, they've they been, uh, they've been out of the store. They've, uh, I think they've kept them out because of covid so i'm hoping things get back to normal soon i, I think it's I, I think it's, it's such a fantastic facility i was talking to i was talking to somebody the other day i, I can't remember if i told you this um, but one of the guys at the at the AA meeting he was saying he says so you're still doing all this this zoom nonsense i was like yeah yeah still doing that he says so um, have you got any real sponsors yet you're still dicking around with them guys you met online <laughs> i was like yeah i'm still dicking around with them <laughs> i've actually stopped fighting them now but a lot of them are really appreciating how I do my recovery and how beneficial and how convenient the, the, the Zoom um, the Zoom platforms are. I believe there are other platforms out there available, like um, Skype and other people, just for, for balance and fairness, not advertising for, for Zoom. I would encourage anyone that has not tried an online meeting, just I don't like change, but once I started doing those, and, and I've met with sponsees for years online, Worked the steps with sponsees, had just as rewarding uh, relationships with sponsees online as in person. And it's so convenient. I mean, I don't even have to go anywhere. I can just sit down and you're there. You know, it's just, it's great. The, the coffee's usually better as well. I know my coffee's better. My coffee's great. <laughs> I think I mentioned I don't have to wear a bra, but you can edit that out. I'm the same. I'm the same. I you don't hate have your bra on, Craig. I hate, no, I hate that. Oh, just, <laughs> listen, there's these little things that women Help us, need. Dave. Help us. We're, we've gone downhill. Help us, please. It Kate's is a perk us. for me. Kate's here. Yeah, Kate, Kate, Kate will keep us Kate, in touch. Kate will get us back on track. <laughs> of course, I don't think we get to hear Kate curse this week. We heard her curse. Oh, no. A week, a week before, yes. Never heard. I won't ask you to curse this week, Kate. Lao Tzu's Wake. I want to read the Guy Fu Fang Jane English translation rather than the Merton translation, if that's okay. Yeah. 
You gave us both, right? Yes, I did. And the the, the Guy Fu Feng Jane English translation, I think, is much better. It, it was much clearer to me. When Lao Tzu died, Xin Shi went to the funeral. He yelled three times and left. A disciple said, were you not a friend of the master? Yes. Then is it proper to mourn him in this way? Xin Shi replied, yes. When I first arrived, I thought his spirit was really there. Now I know it wasn't. When I went in to mourn, the old people were wailing as though they had lost their son. The young ones were crying as though they had lost their mother. Since they were all together, they talked and wept without any control. This is avoiding heaven, indulging in sentiment, ignoring what is natural. In the old days, it was called the crime of violating the law of nature. The master came because it was time. He left because he followed the natural flow. Be content with the moment and be willing to follow the flow and be willing to follow the flow. Then there will be no room for grief or joy. In the old days, this was called freedom from bondage. The wood is consumed, but the fire burns on, and we do not know when it will come to an end. Now, your question, Marla, was, hold on, let me. In that one little section of it, are we, I mean, maybe we should go section by section. That's cool. That, um, yeah, that was the first section, though, was talking about, you know, he, he, yelled three times and then left like he he mourned a yeah, little a little and then he left and his friends are like well don't don't you feel bad this guy died yeah aren't you going to do like all these other people and just yeah. well and cry and carry on and his response to that was no <laughs> 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 uh Looks like he had some acceptance. First thing I thought of was acceptance. He says everything is as it should be. He says that uh, the master came because it was time. He left because it was time, because he followed the natural flow of life. So, you know, we know we have this uh, angst and suffering because we're holding on to wishing things are different than the way they are. So there's this idea that in every, and we could take this not only for death of a person, but you could say the death of a relationship, a job, uh, anything. How about your favorite car that you've got to get a new car? I mean, it could be anything that you that you get attached to this could this could go for any kind of attachment not just something as great as the death of your master or the death of a you know of a parent or a child or any you know um any type of thing that we have to accept that we can't change you know where we apply that uh the uh, serenity prayer to you know Comments? I kind of had that issue when I, I stopped drinking. Your attachment to alcohol? Just, just yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely had separation issues to that, and it was like I was I was almost in mourning. Um, when I went to when I went to my doctor the second time, I think I was about fourteen months in. He was um, he was talking about counselling. He was talking about getting me counselling and, and therapy, um, and he wanted to in particular touch on grief counselling because he, it was almost as if I was mourning. It was almost if I, as if I hadn't moved on from the fact that I couldn't drink. I was still in that negative mindset. I was still looking for that that thing that wasn't there. I hadn't really the um, the idea was that I wasn't um, I wasn't going back to it, but I couldn't accept the fact that I wasn't going back to it. It was, it was kind of like that abusive relationship where I wanted out, but at the same time I still wanted in. I couldn't detach myself from it. 
it's interesting he says that this whole over sentiment is this indulging in sentiment is ignoring what is natural like it's it's not natural to indulge that much in sentiment is what he's saying uh that it's avoiding i, I can see that uh, but I, w- I just want to touch on what craig said just to cross talk a bit i mourned the loss of my best friend when i had to give up my alcohol that was i it was it, and the idea was put into my head by my therapist like you need to mourn because you lost your very best friend, the person that you, the thing you trusted the most. Very true. I think it's why it's important that we, that we get really busy when we get into recovery, you know, that we get active because we used to be so active drinking. I know I did. It was all the time. My, my mind was totally on orchestrating everything around my drinking. You know, get all my appointments done early in the day. You know, all those things that you would do to orchestrate around alcohol. And if you take that away and not replace it, part of part of uh, I think the reason why AA works is because one of the things is we want you at a meeting every day. You know, we're filling your time. You know, uh, we're there to help you learn how to change your thinking. You know, you don't have to do this on your own. You know, you have someone to help you with all of this because alcohol controlled so much of my life that I needed that kind of help and didn't know it. I was always amazed at how how little I actually got done in such a a short amount of time. I could be standing just listening to music and drinking and before you know it, it's three o'clock in the morning. And you've achieved absolutely nothing at all. They said in the old days, this over uh, sentimentality was called the crime of violating the law of nature. So the law of nature would be things come, things go. It's just as natural. If you're talking about the death, death here, it's just, uh, death is just as much a part of life as birth. And that, you know, we should accept, well, similar to Kate's cursing rampage a couple of weeks ago with the three friends, right? Similar to that, where they were talking about, you know, their friend died and it looks like they had a lot of the same response, you know, not an overzealous, you know, it was almost like an envy that he had passed on to another, to taken taken up in his next life, wherever, whatever he was doing, you know, whatever that would be, their thinking was that they were upset because they weren't with him still, not that he was not with them. So that's just an acceptance of things being as they are. This reminded go ahead, death, I mean, in, in uh, Eastern society, death is even, even now death is seen as something acceptable that happens that's your that's supposed to happen in your life and so it's much more acceptable still i wonder why we have such of a such a fixation on our non-acceptance of death it's fear it's got to be fear, fear of losing our loved ones fear of losing our lives i, I mean if we really believe these folks that I used to go to church with, if I really believed what they heard and said they believed, they would be happy someone died because if they were going to a better place, all those things. So I never could, uh, never did add up to me why everyone was so upset when, if it's so much better, what's the problem? Yeah, go. I I hate to be so... uh, (laughs) You know, I, blunt about it, but I think that we just we tiptoe around death, and we just never really learn to deal with death. As Americans, I don't think we deal with it at all. We hate think, eating. Sorry. Go ahead. I think for me, a lot of this is I fear the changes that come with it. Mm-hmm. 
you know, it's going to change my life if someone important to me dies, where, whether or not they're going somewhere great to the, where this fire is burning elsewhere, you know? Um, and I think in thinking about, in terms of my addiction, grieving my addiction, like you guys were talking about, I am happy to be rid of my addiction at this point. Uh, but sometimes if I'm feeling like insecure or weak, I want to go back to my old ways. You know, I want to regress and go back to how things were in the past. And I think that's fear of change also. You know, things are changing. Things are different. Can I cling to something from the past that I was used to already? Um, rather than accept this, how things are now. You know, and that can be for any type of change, Kate. I know for me, I've had major changes in life that, you know, if I got fearful, there would be times during that change that I would regret, you know, those changes happening, be it marriage or job or whatever. And I have the uh, ability to forget bad things sometimes and just remember the few good things, you know. <laughs> My fear likes for me to, to do that. You know, and then I'll, I'll want to regress too. That's what I was thinking of. It's it's just a go-to. The first thing I when I feel anxiety is like, oh, I wish I had a drink. It's still, you know, I still think about it, but I've only been sober 17 months. How about this? This is that last paragraph. The master came because it was time. He left because he followed the natural flow. In other words, it was time for him to go. So he left, be content with the moment. So it's back to us learning to live in the moment, be content with what we have, know that things are the way that they're, they're supposed to be. Then be willing to follow the flow. So be content and then be willing to follow the natural course of actions that are happening. I think that for me is the description of being, you know, relieved, uh, relieved of uh, suffering. Mm -hmm. it, because if I'm in the moment and then I'm following whatever the course of action is and I'm just going with the flow, just like we learned from studying all of this, then I'm going to have very little suffering. It's interesting. The next, the next phrase there, it says, then there will be no room for grief if we're in the moment and going with the flow, and no room for joy, the two extremes. So no room for emotion. So well, no room for extremes. So there's room for contentment. Contentment is like the pause between grief and over, you know, grief and joy is in, not not in being happy, but I would think joy and over joyed and then grief like the, the the two extremes and that we're to learn to live in the middle i think it's what that's it's like the pendulum i was to kate you know we we're talking about the pendulum you know that when we have the one extreme we create the other extreme and the pendulum swings back and forth and we can live above that pendulum just in the pause in the middle and not have to be in this fight back and forth between happy and sad, happy and sad, you know, back and forth, we can be content. And from what this said, which makes sense to me, the only place we can do that's in the moment. That is the only place. But my mind wants to go to the extreme joy. Like right now I'm very, very stressed out this week because I started all these classes. I haven't taken this many classes at once so far in my whole recovery. And I'm kind of just, I'm just stressed out about it because I haven't adjusted to my new flow of doing schoolwork and doing my recovery and doing all my other stuff. So 
like this afternoon I was like there's a guy that's relapsing in a town near me that just relapsed and I was like oh maybe I should go relapse with him this afternoon oh that's a great idea (laughs) right (laughs) because my mind's like oh I'm feeling really stressed out and bad I should go feel really really good by getting high and it's like "Mm, no that's not such a good idea really but that's immediately what my mind thinks. Like, I'm feeling bad. I should feel really good. Mm-hmm. Which would end up making me feel really bad. You know, like that pendulum. Which you've created. Right. Yeah. And it's interesting how the way to be in the middle there is living in the moment. Because most of the time when I'm in, on those extremes, I'm not in the moment. If I'm chasing the good, I'm not in the moment. If I'm reliving the bad, I'm not in the moment. Whatever the case, most of the time, I'm not in the current moment. Hmm. Never. Rarely. And now that I'm in the moment of this meeting, I feel as good. Like, I'm fine. Everything's okay. But. It always works out. Right. It always works out. Doesn't it? Okay, Craig, thank you. The universe will provide. Yes, Marla. Sorry, I was, I was concentrating. Um, I was looking for the verse in the Tao that talks about um, you're, you're, going to be as, you're going to be alive for as long as people remember you. No. That sprung to mind when we were talking about the, um, the, the, people in, the, the people at the wake, the people who are saying... Because one person was saying, I, th- I thought the master was here, but he wasn't. He says, um, yes, when I first arrived, I thought the spirit was really was really there. Now I know it wasn't. When I went into mourn, the old people were wailing as though they had lost their son. The young ones were crying as though they'd lost their mother. And I thought about that, that verse in the Tao, where it says... Basically, an essence of that is you're going to be, you can live forever as long as people remember you. I don't remember that one. I, I kind of vaguely remember. I don't know if it's a verse. I don't think it's a verse, but I, I do remember. I've just, I've just had a quick flick through. I, I could, I couldn't find it. It was dealing with. Um, I think, I think it was just like living, living an eternal life in the day. Because I remember talking about the film Coco. I can remember almost being an emotional wreck after just talking about that film. Coco about the ape? No, the the um it was the Disney the Disney cartoon about the the young lad that's trying to get across the the, the, the rainbow bridge or whatever it's that is that the one that dogs go across? The rainbow bridge? Yeah. Got, got dogs go across the rainbow bridge. Right. It wasn't the rainbow bridge the guy was trying to get across and He's, um, it's, 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 some, it's some Mexican culture that as long as people, if, if people have a picture of you on the mantelpiece or as long as people are remembering you, then you're going to reach eternal life. That's what I thought about when I was reading this, this one about the wake, because people are saying, you go to some, you, you go to some funerals and the, the, the minister or the priest is saying, we're here to celebrate the life of whoever. And then you go to other ones and they say, we're here to mourn the passing of whoever. I think it depends on the outlook of it. So if, if you're there to celebrate the life of somebody, then you're there to remember them. You, and you're there to remember all the good times you've had them and the, the bad times. And I think through that remembrance, then you don't really need to go to a funeral or a wake to, to get, that, to get that, that, that closure on somebody passing. I think as long as you're remembering them. I think the whole point of this for me is teaching me to live in the moment. Mm. And that I won't attach myself to dead things if I'm living in the moment. Because that's what happens, you know, the dead is brittle and dry. There's no life there. No matter how much we cry, no matter how much we want it to come back to life, it's dead. It's dead. It's kind of funny. We had, the dog died when my daughter was real little. She was like five. Buster was the dog's name. So she came home, you know, cute little five-year-old. I said, Sarah, Buster died. 
And she teared up. She said, so I can't play with Buster anymore? I said, nope, he's dead. <laughs> no, no, Marla. Let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. She said, okay, and turned around and went off to play. Except <laughs> that was it. Except there wasn't doggy heaven. There wasn't the funeral. We didn't, you know, all the stuff that goes with that, you know, didn't happen. I said, I'm going to try this if I hit her right between the eyes. With <laughs> <laughs> If I won't have to fool with all that, because I, I didn't have good motives. With, I just didn't want to have to fool with all that that afternoon and do all the, you know, doggy heaven stuff. So she said, I mean, it lasted like less than three seconds. I mean, a tear didn't even come out of her eye. I mean, it was that quick. She said, okay. That acceptance is uh, a little bit like this. If we just deal with it. There, there's no life in, in the death that's there. We, the sooner we can move on and, and process it, the, uh, the sooner we can move on to the next thing that's coming, you know, and not, yeah. not have to suffer as much. Yeah, I agree. No matter what it is we're talking about, you know, and it doesn't have to be something as extreme as death, any kind of change at all, because things in our life all the time are, are being birthed and dying and birth and that cycle of life is happening you know hundreds of times during the day in our life with all kinds of different things you know it's all the time and the more we hold on to something that's already dead no matter what it is we're talking about the more that we suffer and it's not natural for us to do that and for me that happens when I'm not in the moment because I want to hold on to old things whatever it is and I always suffer when I do that, always. And I create those extremes. And the, the point is to be in the moment. I like this too, it says, in the old days, this was called freedom from bondage. The freedom not to hold on to the dead and the things that are dead. That's freedom. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. The wood is consumed but the fire burns on and we do not know when it will come to an end. So that with the wood of that, whatever person, their life or the situation is consumed. And then, then it moves on to something else. In other words, things are always, you know, dying and being born that that cycle's happening all the time. And we just have to learn not to be attached to that and live in the moment. And go with the flow. You just have to learn how to do that. What that equates to me is learning to just be available. Open, opening my heart like um, Michael Singer talked about in uh, Untethered Soul. He used that phrase a lot about opening his heart to everything. Like not being closed off. Mm-hmm. And you know, not thinking he had it figured out and just open his heart like a way that he can send love to things and and not not automatically see things with a block, you know, and have your little hula hoop and keep everything else out, you know, kind of thing. His attitude was the opposite, that he opens his heart to people. He tries to be kind and, you know, follow that flow. And for me, it's being responsive in more moments of the day rather than hesitant in more moments of the day. Mm-hmm. Responsive. Yeah. Responding to when we see God doing something or see love in action or a way that we can love, we do it instead of holding back and you know, being all consumed with ourselves and not being in the moment. If I'm not in the moment, there's no way I can do that. I can only open my heart in the moment. I can only love in the moment. I can't do that in the past or future. I can only do that right now. So much of the things that really um, satisfy me are in the moment. Everything's in the moment, actually. There's nothing future and past that really does that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. None of it, your past doesn't matter. You don't know what's going to happen in the future. So why even consider 
I get a little bit out of planning for the future, but that's a small amount of time, though. That's just a very little amount of time versus every moment of the day, because used to I was never in the moment. I was always planning for something future or regretting something from the past. I was never where I am. I was never in the moment. I was never available. Never. It is. It, it's been a retraining of the brain not to dwell in in regrets in the past. You know, it's it's. I ha- had to say to myself that was then. We're here now, and I've. That's sort of a one of the mantras I take. I have to say to myself when I go backwards and think about other regrets I have in my past. Mm-hmm. It. They don't matter anymore. It. This. They just. Then it's it's not helping me live in the moment to live in my past or my regrets. It's not helpful. One of the first mantras that I learned was, and I know I'm butchering the pronunciation, but it's a Hebrew word for what Moses said when he saw the burning bush. He said, I'm here. And it's uh, the word Hanini. And so I used that as a mantra for a while that in my meditation that I am here, I am here, you know, and just that learning to be in the moment in my meditation, because, you know, that's where I started learning that Kate, you was talking about your thoughts, you know, meditate. That's what meditations helped me with is those thoughts I have during meditation was the first time that I realized that most of these thoughts I have are just thoughts. I don't have to act on them no matter how good or bad they are. They're just thoughts and what 98% of those are recurring thoughts that you have. They're not even have anything to do with what's going on at all. And they're always false and not real. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that reminded me when you were talking about those thoughts of going and use are no different than, you know, any other thought. You know, and, and most of which we don't even need to act on. They're, they don't have more merit or less or, you know, they're not, they don't have more control over us, you know, even though we might think they do, you know. It's like the dreams, you know, if you have a drinking dream, it's like people talk, I said, it's just a dream. Most of my, I mean, how many times has anything in my dreams been real? They've never been real. So, <laughs> Why is my drinking dream real or my using dream? Why would that be really? You know, we feel so guilty about those. Yeah. It's just it's the way the brain works. I mean, I've had some crazy dreams in there. None of them were real either. You know, even if I wanted them to be real, they weren't real. Or the ones that I, you know, didn't want to be real, they weren't real. They weren't even more, any more real either. So just thoughts, getting that uh, separation from our thoughts, I think is a, is a big gift that we start learning through meditation and through mm-hmm. through sobriety. Yeah, Anything so. else, guys? What else do y'all have with this? I found a verse in the Tao about attachment. It's the 44th. It says, fame or self, which matters more? Self or wealth, which is more precious? Gain or loss, which is more painful? He who is attached to things will suffer much. He who saves will suffer heavy loss. A contented man is never disappointed. He who knows when to stop does not find himself in trouble. He will stay forever safe. That's not the verse I was looking for, but I found that and I thought just was talking about um, being attached to things and just learning to let go of things and realising that it's not the material things that are as important as it is, the, the connections that we make and the love that we have in, in lives. Or the emotional attachments too, Greg, because we, my, my worst attachments are not physical. They're emotional, you know, emotional attachments to people and uh, expecting people to behave a particular way and they don't. I get more angst out of that than anything that a, a, has to do with anything monetary. Yeah, is, that, good. is that a control thing? Yeah, well, I'm sure it is. Mm-hmm. Not living in the moment too. Yeah, you know, wanting things to be different than they are, stay, staying the same, and me not wanting things to change. I mean, I can go and sit in a restaurant one time and come back and want to sit in the same place I sat at before. Are you like that, Marla? Everybody like that? Yeah. 
what, what, why it, we get like go, go to a place for a familiarity, even if we've only been there once. Okay. That's my spot. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's crazy, but that's just human nature, I guess. But because we feel secure because we've been there before. I don't know, I don't I, I, know what I, it is. It's behind all of that, but. But, you know, as a yoga teacher and a student, you know, when you go into a studio, you go to your spot. Right. And God forbid somebody takes your spot. <laughs> we had a restaurant we used to eat at every morning. And you had your regulars, and they all ate at their place in the restaurant. You know, everybody had their one spot. And if somebody new walked in one day and sat down in somebody's spot. Yeah. And the lady that ran the place, she come and said, I'm sorry, honey, but. Henry or whatever his name was, he'll be here in about 10 minutes and that's his spot. Would you mind moving, please? And she made him move. <laughs> so he would have his spot. But uh, we are, uh, but that idea of not being, I think that flexibility with accepting change is so important. I think that's one of the major in recovery that I've, one of the major things I've learned is to, is to be okay with change. To, to not be so set in my ways about everything. And I think that open-mindedness we start learning of not figuring everything out, of being okay with not knowing, goes a long way toward that. I hope you're right. Just think about how your attitude, Marla, over the last two years has had to change toward everything. More change than probably you've had in how many years? Ten. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I made some significant changes. And just getting that attitude that, hey, I'm learning to live in the moment. I'm not, I'm not creating extremes. I'm learning how to be available and respond instead of react and open my heart and just see where this thing goes. Hmm. Hmm. That's freedom from bond. The bondage was having to control everything to, to try to keep it the way it was, no matter if it was good or bad. Yeah. Just trying to keep it the same. That's the bondage. And it's freedom from us. Yeah. yeah well, I'm sure we can all see that in our lives where we were attached to not changing. <laughs> and I can be there in just a moment, Marla. I mean, I can be there like super quick. I was thinking that too. A lot of, I've, I've spent a long time living with somebody that I'm just profoundly lonely with. And I, I just did because I was afraid to change anything. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it took some time. Most people who have been divorced, have, that's where they were. I can say the same thing for me too, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, changes. What's the saying in recovery? The, the only thing that uh two things two things people hate the most is the way things are and change <laughs> yeah and that there's a there's one thing that uh will never change and that is that things will change or something to that effect I, that's, I, I, that's, yeah, that's, the, the only that's, constant is change the only constant is change thank yeah, you that's like the buddhist yeah. uh, buddhist that was, one of the, that, was one, that was one of the quotes from the Tao as well yeah the, the biggest the, the only constant Thing in the Tao is that things are going to change. Yeah. And Earth's learning to be okay with change and not kicking, not go kicking and screaming because you know what? Whether we're kicking and screaming or not, it's going to change. Despite <laughs> us. Yeah. Yeah. Despite us. We can't stop it from changing. It's going to change. I still like to throw my toys out of the pram now and again as well, just because I'm not happy with the way things have changed. You're a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's just guys, though, Marla. You know, we left our own devices. None of us like change, I don't think. It's none of us like change. It's, that's very true, man, man or woman. Oh. Well, anything else, guys? Are y'all good? Yeah, it was a good session. Sorry hey, I missed last week. Hey, dear. You okay? I'm okay. I'm just kind of stressed, but I'm doing better. It's a good stress. You're learning. You're going on a learning journey, right? You're studying for something. So. Yeah. If it gets too much, drop a class. Yeah. Or if, if you've got homework to do, bring it to the meeting. We'll do your homework with you. <laughs> no, second thought. Uh, that was a nervous laugh. 
<laughs> that was a no one back to school. I don't lot. think you trust us with her homework, Craig. Uh, no, I don't want to go back to school at this moment in time. All right, guys. Well, uh, I had a couple of questions from Sensei from last week. I think I'll write them for when he comes back. It was interesting, something he said about uh, uh, that on the mat, that, you know how we talk about acting our way into right thinking? That that same thing happens for them on the mat, that they do the act of meditation first, and then their thinking changes after the fact. Yep. That they're do the action and the, the the mind follows that kind of a thing. I thought that was really good. I'm getting some good responses from him on people enjoying the podcast with him on. So that's good. Oh, good. That's good. I can't okay, wait for the next one. If everyone's good, then yeah, they are great means. Really enjoy the means. Well, guys, have a great week then. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, this is Buddy C. I wanted to make you aware of several recovery-related resources that I've posted in the episode description. These resources include a list of recovery podcasts, a free sober meditation app, daily recovery email, shared Google recovery calendars. Hope you put some of these resources to use and have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends in recovery.